Um, he does a great job bringing people together and making a team approach to getting people well, both their body, spirit, and mind. And it does take all three. Uh, what my role, in, and Vaughn and I have known each other for a long time, is that I'm a biological, holistic, alternative, there's a lot of names, but we do dentistry with the whole body and mind and not just repairing a tooth. We try to look at the connection that this tooth, this mouth, this gum has with your whole health and conversely how your whole health can affect your mouth too. Um, I love working with people like Vaughn. They can they do the testing. Um, you know, a lot of our patients have gut issues. Uh, they have immune system issues, detox issues. You know, get some of the basics uh, done. And then a lot of people, they're still not getting over the hump. And that's when you start looking at the team approach of getting people well, whether or not it's energy medicine, um, biological dentistry. Uh, there's so many modalities beyond the, uh, what I call, give them a pill and send them out the door mentality. Uh, unfortunately, we, we have one of the most expensive healthcare systems in the world. Per capita, what's spent on uh, healthcare in the United States far out exceeds any other country in the world. Um, the shame about it is when you look at the health statistics for our country, we rank about the third world country. We're like 30th on mortality, infant care, um, across the board. So we're paying big bucks for our health care, but we're not getting well. And the problem is the system. The system is not working. All of us have gone to the doctor. You have your three minutes to tell what's going wrong with you makes a diagnosis, writes a prescription, and he runs to the next door. Because that's the economic model that they have for them. Most MDs don't work for themselves anymore. They work under a hospital or insurance care, and they have to follow the, the program. And when you see what reimbursements come back on, on health care, they may have $30 that they get in their pocket <coughs> for talking to you. So getting in a consult, you know, talk to you about lifestyle changes, health and nutrition, they can't make ends meet and do that kind of model. So unfortunately the system's broken. What we have to do if we want to be healthy is find out what works for us. Um, the internet's great in a lot of ways. You have to be a little careful, but the knowledge is there the, on nutrition, and we need to change from a disease model to a wellness model. What we have now is we're under disease care, not, to pre not for prevention and for wellness. They wait till you get high blood pressure, then they hand you a pill. Ten years before that, they could have put you on exercise or diet or supplements, and you might not have ever built, uh, gotten high lipids or, or blood pressure. But that's just not how the economic works. And it's interesting, um, health insurance will pay for a bypass operation for hundreds of thousands of dollars because that's the way systems work. Uh, but <clears throat> preventative care, like chelation therapy, which helps clear, clear the arteries, I've had it done. My dad died early of heart disease. And could keep people from ever having to have heart bypasses. So there's alternatives out there. It's just the economic model and who we put in power between the FDA, the hospitals, the insurance companies. Um, and it, it's made the system f fail, unfortunately. A little bit about my story and why I do what I do. Uh, when I was in dental school, I, you know, studied hard. You got to be really n nose to the books to get in. It's real competitive. Got in, and you get in thinking, "Wow, I'm in. I want to learn all this knowledge, how to make people healthy, how to make them well." I remember one of my first uh, classes I took is on dental materials and we studied the silver fillings, the ones that were used for years. And they said, well, we call them silver fillings, but they're really mercury fillings. They're 55% mercury, 30% silver, copper, tin, and zinc. But we don't want to say mercury in front of the patients that might alarm them. So we call them silver fillings. Um, I said, well, that doesn't feel quite right to me. And uh, <clears throat> I, as a kid, lived a block away from a drugstore, and I drank too many cherry Coca-Colas. So I had bad teeth, a lot of fillings, the mercury fillings as a kid. And when I heard this, uh, I said, I'm going to get this stuff out, even before I, I aware of awareness. You know, one of the most toxic substances known to man, two inches from my brain, just didn't make a lot of sense to me. 
So we work on each other at the Dill School, and for better or worse, and the Dill School does a lot of things well, um, <clears throat> but they don't take all the precautions when we, like we do when we take mercury fillings out. So I had 10 old mercury fillings replaced in about 30 days time, and I know I inhaled and swallowed some. Um, shortly a after that, I developed sore throat, fever, malaise, just didn't feel right. Went to my regular doctor, <clears throat> oh, here's an antibiotic, I better come back in a week. Um, didn't get better, so I got another round, and then a third, got rid of sore throat. By that time, my GI tract didn't feel right. I developed what they call irritable bowel syndrome. Um, so that's another referral to another doctor, gastroenterologist. Nobody sits down and talks and asks you, what's happened with you lately, what exposures, um, you know, everything is, here's a disease, here's a drug, see ya. And so no, no contact, no find out what had been going on with me, uh, gave me a prescription at the time, it's phenobarbital, and it slows down your intestinal motility, but also it slows down your brain. I mean, you just feel like you're in a cloud. And I said, I'm not gonna be on this stuff. So I read and, and read about doing a rotary diet where you don't eat the same food for four days. And I rotated my meals and I got better. I lost like 30 pounds and you know, didn't feel 100%, but at least I could function. Got out of dental school and started practicing mercury dentistry because that's what we're you know, brainwashed in doing. So all day I'm taking out, putting it in, breathing a cloud of this stuff. And I developed rashes, uh, fever, um, more neurological stuff. And co of course I go to traditional doctors. They either want to give you pain pills, uh, antidepressant medication, steroids. The, this is their weapons. You know, nobody talked to me about what I've been exposed to. Nobody talked to me about lifestyle. Nobody talked to me about diet. And so I said, this isn't working. And it took me about three years, and I finally ended up down in Dallas, Texas. Is Dr. Ray has a clinic down there, and he's an environmental uh, medicine specialist. And what he does is look for environmental causes for illness beyond what the scope of normal doctors look at. And he does a two-hour consult. You sit down with him. He wants, I filled out pages and stuff. Um, they get the sickest people from all over the world to go there. Anyway, um, from this information, it, it looks at prenatal, your infant, your, what medications you have, what exposures you've had. And after going through that, and he said, he says, I think you're mercury poisoned. You've got all the signs of mercury poisoning I've ever seen. So we ran a test, and my mercury was 50 times normal. I not only had a bunch of mercury fillings as a kid, I played with mercury. I wasn't very smart. Played with mercury-coated pennies. Uh, thimerosal was in my contact lens solutions. Uh, the, all the vaccines, the childhood vaccines at the time were preserved with mercury. So you, you add that, and this is what I talk about with our patients too. From prenatal, even before we're born, your mother has a mouthful of mercury fillings, she has other toxic cysts, Lyme disease, other stuff. You're accumulating those prenatally. And then as you go along in your life and you get these other exposures, you know, our food is now contaminated, our water, our air, we, what 100 years ago was a pretty pristine environment where we raised our own food. Nowadays, um, a lot of things have pesticides, Monsanto rules, the agriculture mar market, and you accumulate these toxins. And depending on your uh, genetics, how well you can clear these toxins and what your, gen how strong you are your genetics and what your weaknesses are, uh, at a certain point, you can reach your toxic threshold where your body, your liver, your detoxification pathways just can't excrete it anymore, and then you get sick. And depending on whatever your genetics are, whatever your weak in, a lot of times that disease will show up, whether it's not, it's neurological, immunological, cancer. Um, these all start, I believe, from nutritional deficiencies, stress, and toxicities. So <clears throat> um, getting a handle on all these and start eliminating these in your life is how you get wellness and not taking the latest drug or late, latest medication. I know you've all watched TV and somebody comes running across with a field of flowers and then they tout the latest new drug that's allowed them to do this or whatever. And at the end there's that disclaimer, may cause you know, tuberculosis, hep hepatitis, maybe death. You go, oh boy, I can't wait till I go up and sign up on that way. But money drives our medical system, the pharmaceuticals, the FDA, the people that work the FDA go to work for the pharmaceutical companies, the people of the pharmaceutical companies go, it's just a sweetheart deal. And we get 
screwed literally in the in the wake of it. Um, so anyway, I found this out. Um, I went back to my office, threw out my mercury filling, went out and trained with Dr. Hal Huggins. He's the dentist that wrote the book All in Your Head. And it touted about how he found that mercury was toxic and he changed his practice off over and he taught dentists how to remove it safely. You come in our office, we teach, teach it like a toxic waste site. We have you uh, draped up, fans, filters, suctions, charcoal, vitamin C afterwards that you take and uh, to get it out safely. And also, you kind of open up eyes. Once you start opening these doors and going down this, other doors open for you too. Um, as, as dentists were trained to do root canals, root canals are when a nerve dies in the tooth and you uh, kill the rest of the nerve, fill it with a filling material and hope it stays sealed. I've been doing dentistry long, long enough. Um, a lot of times that doesn't happen, that the seal breaks. Um, just a quick aside, a friend of mine's an endodontist. He's the only one in the town that does root canals correctly and uses ozone and, and ultraviolet uh, to sterilize them. And he said, look at these x-rays. This is a patient he uh, saw three years ago and did a root canal on. And he recommended she needed some others at the time. She didn't come back. Now it's three years later, her oncologist sent her to him because she has a toothache. She has stage three uh, colon cancer. And so he showed me her x-rays and she has eight abscessed teeth. And uh, some of her root canals are done improperly. Uh, other teeth that she's just let go. And um, in dentistry, and with Hal Huggins, we're trained that uh, acupuncture meridians go through the teeth. The Chinese were very smart. They invented acupuncture 2,500 years ago. And even most modern day hospitals, a lot of them will have an acupuncture they'll send you to for pain management. And it's, it's become ex accepted. Um, they believe these energy meridians go through the teeth. And we have charts in our rooms to look at. And three of her teeth were on the colon meridian that were abscessed. You know, that's not always cause and effect. I'm sure she had other health uh, lifestyle choices part of it. You know, if she has a sick of mouth as that, I'm sure she wasn't doing well with her diet and other things too. My point is, and all this is, that when we start on our health journey, we're all on this journey. I've discovered a lot, and I kind of look at, Lord, why me this time? <laughs> but all these lessons in life that we learn and we try to pass on to other people, that there's ways of getting healthy um, you have to take charge of your own health and make your own decision of what feels comfortable to you. And um, read, study online, find the people um, like Vaughn and people associate with him that can help build, build, be a part of your health building team. And um, you know, simple things you can do. And, and some people say, well, I'm overwhelmed, where, where do I start? And I'd say, well, just start with the simple things. Clean up your own environment first. Make sure your home, your oasis, uh, your bedroom, your oasis, you want to get out toxic products, cleaning products, cosmetic products, um, <clears throat> foods, your next thing you start on, organic when you can. I know it kind of gets expensive, but um, more fresh fruits and vegetables, less processed food, air in your house, put an air filter in your bedroom. You're breathing that air all night. Uh, try not to use carpeting when you can, it outgasses. Some of the newer paints don't outgas. Um, all these things, we're taking in daily. Um, our skin is a large uh, reservoir for things passing through it, um, what we breathe. And these are part of that toxic load I was talking about earlier, that as you build those up, and if you change your lifestyle and start eliminating those, and then working with people like Vaughn on how to detox, the right supplements, the right diet, you can reverse age um, damage and the accumulation of it. It's only when you keep on that path, that's when you crash, you know. And, um, and when you look at the, our health charts, um, the rise of autism, ADD in our children, it's astronomical. I, I don't remember kids being autistic when I was growing up, when I was showing my age, but um, I just don't remember it. And the statistics now say one in 59 in boys I mean, that's a huge number, and that's a generational thing, so it's gotta be environmental. I remember going to my daughter's uh, middle school, and I had to drop something off, and there was a line outside the door, and I asked her, what's that for? She said, that's the nurse's station, that's the kids that are down there for the meds that day. 
there's so large chunk of kids are down there adding their meds for the day. A lot of them be medicated or the educators won't have them in the classroom. The, the drug is a simple, to their thinking, easy way to manage these kids, but it makes them zombies. And you know, a lot of them have gut issues, uh, they have poor diets, um, you know, people, we're, we're just looking for band-aids for our problems and not, not addressing them. On uh, the other end of the spectrum, Alzheimer rates are climbing. Um, it, I read just today, 50% uh, over 80 show some signs of dementia. I remember my grandfather who grew up on the farm, lived on the farm, and lived to be 93, he still was farming, and he died under a tree of a heart attack. No cancer, no, and he was sharp as a tack. I remember a conversation with him as a child, but he never you know, got off the farm, drank well water, grew their own food. So getting these diseases isn't uh, inevitable. We can take uh, changes in our life, uh, and so hopefully these won't happen, one, to our children, and also to ourselves as we get older. Um, autoimmune disease rates, a lot of cancer rates are up. Um, <clears throat> the other thing in the mouth when I do an exam, mercury is a big issue for us. The root canals, whether or not they're leaking. Gum disease, even the American Dental Association and the American Medical Association on board. If you've got a lot of bacteria and inflammation bleeding in the gums, that bacteria can get in their vessels, make you at risk at heart attack, stroke, diabetes, um, and I think even some cancers. Um, all diseases in the body start with inflammation. What makes inflammation? Diet, toxic metal, metal, metals, toxic chemicals. Um, these are what make inflammation. What we do about it, the things I suggested earlier, um, and getting with somebody to kind of help diagnose you and be your guide to kind of steer you through some of, some of these things. But um, that's kind of been my life journey and how I became a biological dentist and how I feel passionate about it and how you know, working with a team like, like uh, Bond that we can help get people well. Um, how much time I've got left, I can throw it open for some questions if you guys would like to do that. What's the name of your practice? Uh, I just call my name Jack Ferguson, DDS. I work, I'm working out of two offices, one Premier Dental down here on, in Independence, and then I'm working with a Dr. Babcock at Overland Park. And I have some cards to pass out afterwards if anybody would like those, so, yeah. And when, once you come, and what we do at our office, we look at the teeth, evaluate them, um, look if there's toxic metals, inflammation in the gums, see if there's any infections. Um, and when we take mercuries out, we take it out safely. Fans, filters, suction, we treat it like a toxic waste site, which is what the EPA did. Some dentists took their scrap amalgam, instead of, they just threw it in the regular trash. EPA fined them $100,000. So they can't put it in the trash. When, if I have a scra scrap amalgam from taking out people's teeth, we put it in a glass vial with water on top of the lid on it because mercury is liquid at room temp temperature. Slightly above that, it turns into a gas. And we call a hazmat service once a month that picks it up. And that's how we have to get rid of it. But legally, I don't. Legally, you could put three mercury. So 50% of dentists in the United States are still using mercury because it's cheap and quick. Getting back to the ills of our health system, cheap and quick. And that's that's what we've dumbed down to, unfortunately. But um, yeah, any that's the old joke. The only place safe place in a dental office for mercury fillings is in a patient's mouth. Any place else, it's a toxic waste. Uh, hmm. Do you suggest oil pulls? I do. Uh, coconut oil pulling is great. Um, <clears throat> be careful when you're detoxification if you still got mercury, because sometimes you can leach the mercury out. Uh, people who grind or clench your teeth. Remember what I said earlier about being liquid at room temperature and so people that drink, if you got mercury fillings, if you drink hot coffee, it's going to make it out gas. If you're a clincher or a grinder, you're going to get mercury down into your gut. A lot of our patients, and I remember I first started seeing patients and that I get a lot of referrals even from MDs who do mercury testing in the area, alternative docs. And a lot of the patients had candida. And interesting, I did too when I was sick. And so I sit down with one of the docs that actually won the seminar on. When you chew mercury and, and get mercury down in your gut, 
mercury kills off some of the, the good bacteria and then it promotes some of the bad bacteria. So then you get that imbalance and candida is very opportunistic. It fills a void. We naturally have candida in us, it's a fungus. And, um, but when the other good guys are crowded out, it goes crazy. And then it makes inflammation, makes leaky gut. So um, when I first got sick, they said, oh, you've got candida. You know, went on an antifungal and some probiotics. I felt, you know, 80% better. But then I got sensitive to the antifungal because I didn't cause a problem. Then I had to detox the mercury in my body and then the candida cleared up. A lot of our patients have candida. So having the gut is, it's where you build the health first with probiotics, diet, uh, detoxing. Uh, sleep is another one that's important, getting your sleep cycle normal, getting your nutrition balanced, getting rid of infections, inflammation, and then toxicities. Uh, these are kind of the seven pillars that we have in our office for health and, and helping people get well. Yes, sir. Um, well, two questions. Like, can you, can you tell what's going on in the gut based on their dentistry? And then what's the alternative to a root canal? If sure. If the dentist tells you you need a root canal. Yeah, like, yep. Yeah. Good questions. Um, <clears throat> we, a lot of times patients come to us and, and we get the complex cases from medical doctors. They're the ones that they've done everything they can to get them well. Um, I'm not getting them well. See, see what you can figure out. Uh, so they send to me, but I like to get their blood work. So things I look at are the inflammatory markers in the body, c reacted po protein, glutathione levels, um, white blood cell counts, uh, gamma globulins, T, T and B cells. These all give me an idea of what's going on with your immune system. Huggins, um, in his clinic when he had it, um, would actually do it before and after blood testing. He'd do it before, he would take out the mercury fillings, they would stay at his clinic in two weeks and do a detox with a lot of IV vitamin C and they redo their blood test. Using that two, three week period, a lot of those immunological markers got better. And the main thing he did was get their mercury out, clean up root canals, leaking root canals, and, and give them super nutrition. So <clears throat> the inflammatory markers is what I look at when I look at a, a new patient and it kind of gives me clues. But the key to it and good diagnostician is you put a timeline together of you know, when did you start feeling bad? What happened to you the year before? You, know, you kind of put together a chronology of what you've been exposed to, what was going on in your life, stress, accidents, and then it gives us a better picture of where to start looking and where to start repairing. But it, yeah, uh, when people have gut issues, then I'm looking for mercury phones. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. The root canals. Um, the root canal is either an option of the extraction or the root or, or the root canal. Uh, there's only one guy in town I trust to do root canals, and there's sometimes it's a critical tooth, and if a patient's in good health, I say okay. But if you have cancer, autoimmune disease, a lot of environmental allergy, you shouldn't have a root canal. It's just a stressor on the immune system. Um, the gentleman I was talking about does ozone to disinfect the canal system and uses a laser to disinfect more. And he's just very meticulous now he's doing. Some guys just slap them in and slap them out and send them out the door. And I just don't, I can tell you how many bad, as dentists, we know what to look at. It's just kind of, unfortunately dentists are kind of like carpenters. There's guys who are craftsmen and take their skills seriously. And there's other guys that I wouldn't let them touch my dog. But <clears throat> it's just, there's some good guys out there, but it's just like all professions have them. And just because somebody has a white coat doesn't mean that they have the same skills or, or that you want them treating you. Yes, sir. So you're saying it's not so much that root canals are bad, it's the manner in which they are. It can be a combination of both. I think the jury's still out on that. Uh, and some, Huggins didn't want any root canals and he got the sickest of the sick people. I. You know, as dentists, we're trained to save teeth, so we almost feel like a failure when we have to tell a patient to lose a tooth. But I'd rather save a patient than lose a tooth. Most teeth I can replace somehow, some way. And, um, but I think I owe my patient a, a legal responsibility to tell them what the options are and the pros and cons and let them decide. And that's what I do in any consultation in my office is, I, all this is still being written. You know, what I did five years ago, what I'm doing today is totally different. Materials change, times change. 
And I say, I'm just giving you the information. I try to go to updates whenever I can. The best information as I can. I could see someday where I think all root canals are bad, really. When you think of it, where do you leave something dead in the body? Today, I just came here from the office, worked straight through lunch, pulled a tooth. It was an old root canal, pulled it out. Pus came out of it. It was black. Smelled like an old rotten hole, and I, and I pulled enough old root canals in my time. And I, I said, just think of a tree and be in the forest that's struck by lightning. What happens to it? The forest tries to take it back. The mold eat it. The bugs eat it. The fungi eat it. Your body doesn't like something dead. You know, acupuncture. It's living tissue. Um, you have a nerve and a blood supply. Your tooth has circulation through it. Uh, there's fluid that goes through the teeth that kind of help cleanse it. And this is a normal part of how a tooth works. When you cut that off, it's dead. Mm -hmm. And so, <clears throat> you know, I think bacteria come in there. I mean, we just, we have bacteria all in our mouth all, all the time. You can't tell me some of that can't get down the side of it. Mm -hmm. And it, and a dead, you know, something live. It, it, a good analogy is, we've been in a forest and I love camping, blah, blah, blah. When you're in a forest and you start seeing some trees, have, some have mold and moss on it, some don't. The older trees have mold and moss on them because they're getting the end of their life expand and they can't naturally keep it off. The younger trees, they don't have it. You know, it's kind of like live teeth and dead teeth, if I can give that analogy. So um, if you have, if you insist and have to have a root canal, it's a critical tooth. I only have one guy in town. If you think that there's any options, have the tooth out. And I'm probably leaning more and more towards having the tooth out. Well, yes, ma'am. Um, what do you use on fluoride? Don't use it. <clears throat> fluoride. Yep, yep. Fluoride. Fluoride. I'll tell you the history of fluoride. It was back in the 50s. They did one small study in Arkansas, and they had high natural level of fluoride in the water. They had lower decay rate. But this Washington lawyer, fluoride was a byproduct for the uranium refining industry. Follow the money trail. What I said earlier, and they had this big pot of uh, stannous and sodium fluoride down there, and it was a toxic substance. They were going to have to pay to dispose of it. They had this uh, attorney do a research, found this one study about the use of fluoride and lower decay rate. And there were, it was like a population of 300. It wasn't a big study. He got through with the ADA and the AMA <clears throat> to uh, put this in our water supply because they could now sell it to water municipalities to put in the water. But it was never long-term tested uh, to see. Fluoride in a high concentration is used in a, a rat, as a rat poison. And reason why <clears throat> uh, it does kind of harden outside of the enamel, it, fluoride, chloride, and bromide all the way on the right-hand side of the periodic table as a free electron, quick little science, and it floats around. That means it's re a real reactive. Any of those things, have, they come sealed in a glass container. You can't put it in metal. It's so corrosive, it eats through metal. Um, <clears throat> so we don't know what that free electron is doing the rest of our body. Yeah, it may be hardening the teeth here a little bit, but one of, the, one of the theories for disease is free radical is what causes inflammation and disease. Fluorine, chlorine, and bromide are free radicals. So I don't, and this, when you think about it, you're letting the federal government medicate us without our permission. And that's what fluoridating water is, essentially. I want to have a choice what I put in my body. We get bottled water in a glass container. And <clears throat> there's uh, ways to get rid of caries without fluoridating our teeth. Um, diet, home care are number one, number two. Uh, we use xylitol containing toothpaste. Xylitol is a non nutritive sugar that makes plaque not adhere to it. Um, <clears throat> there's oil pulling. Um, there's other natural dentifrice, um, and I still believe that kids are at risk. Some kids have softer teeth, and so we put sealants on those. Um, this conference I went to in uh, Georgia two months ago, uh, they did a study <clears throat> in which kids, in some families, some kids have the high decay rate, some have low, same family, same diet, pretty much same home care. And they found out that it has something to do with the hypothalamus axis. And remember what I said earlier about how teeth breathe and percolate fluid through them? And uh, if you have a high sugar diet, some kids' hypothalamus turns on how the saliva, instead of going out through the tooth, comes in through the tooth. And that's what makes it more uh, carries resistance. His research said a natural way to treat that 
is vitamin D and vitamin K. Most of us are we're so, so worried about the sun anymore and lathering on sunblock and our kids and ourselves that we've gone crazy with. We, we don't, we're one of the few animals that don't make vitamin D. Um, we need to get an outside source for it. I'm not a big proponent of milk. I think cow's milk is for baby cows, not for <laughs> our babies. Anyway, um, so supplementing vitamin D, starting with the children, there's children's doses, and vitamin K is the other one. The two of them work together to turn back on the hypothalamus that it, it, it helps your glycemic um, index be more normalized. And so we just started adding, this is what I said, I'd do something different than what I did five years ago. This is something I just picked up here, the conference I went to in, in March. Um, so our kids are at risk, we get them in, say, get them on vitamin D and get them on vitamin K, use our protocols. We're not seeing decay in our kids. Yeah, we're just not seeing decay in our kids. Yes, sir. Just for an average person. <clears throat> sure. Um, some pa patients make their own. They do baking soda, either hydrogen peroxide or coconut oil. Um, most of the ones in the, in the health food stores are going to be okay, but you have to read labels. Um, Tom's Mean, which I used to promote, guess what? They got bought by Colgate. Colgate realized that, well, we're losing market share. Yeah. And you can't tell me if it's Thursday that some of their product isn't going down one line and they're contaminating, cross contaminating. And if you got to read Tom Main too, they're putting fluoride in some of their toothpaste. Not all of them. Oh, um. So you have to read labels. Uh, glycerin I don't like, some of the propanols. If you need a chemistry de degree to figure out what's in your toothpaste, don't buy it. Um, <clears throat> so it's natural. Uh, I like tea tree oil. It's a natural preserve. Corella is good. Um, peppermint for flavoring. Uh, I'm a big believer in the essential oils are good too. So just read labels. And uh, just just because it's in a health food store doesn't mean it's always healthy, you know. Uh, and I, a long time ago, we got shocked that some of the health food, not all the produce is organic. Well, why are you a health food store if you're not selling? But they're trying to make it affordable for everybody. So read labels and get informed. Yes, ma'am. There's, a, there's always a risk, you know, anytime you do, you have to, even the procedure we do, we put copious amount of water and just do intermittent drilling so you don't let the drill heat up a lot. But it heats up a little bit, <clears throat> and it depends on the size of the filling first. Um, give you a, an example, um, amalgam filling's metal, and so every time you have something hot and cold to drink, metal expands at a different rate than what a tooth enamel does. So as dentists know, it put a lot of kids through college, dentist kids through college, because these amalgam fillings eventually cause the tooth break and you have to crown it. The composite materials that we use nowadays in porcelain and some gold somewhat, um, they have the same coefficient of thermal expansion, so they don't cause that expansion of the tooth, so we see less breakage. The composite filling is actually glued in there. Amalgam's just held in there by friction. And so have, have, they have to cut undercuts in it, which weakens enamel. There's always that risk. Uh, we try to minimize tooth r removal and how much heat we do. Um, but most teeth are healthier with a composite or porcelain filling in it than a mercury filling from the chance of breaking. And all mercury fillings have a life expectancy. You know, the dentists don't tell you this, even the ADA says it, that most mercury fillings last about 10 or 15 years. Then as the mercury dries out of them and the margins kind of ship, it's called a phenomenon called creep, where you get these gaps in the margin. And that's where you get bacteria in there and get reoccurring decay. So they're not, people say, well, I'm just said I'd have these forever. No, <laughs> if I take those out, most of the fillings I take out are over five or 10 years old and will have a little bit of decay or sometimes a lot in there. <clears throat> so that's another reason for, for replacing them. But these new, but composite fillings actually make the tooth stronger than what the metal does. And then the second question was um, for root canals. Uh -huh. um, what's your thoughts on a, uh, getting one done with, uh, that's calcified? A calcified canal? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> a most good endodontist, <clears throat> excuse me, can uh, give me a drink. <clears throat> Most good endodontists, if you do decide to get the root canal, can get past calcification. They have something that dissolves it where they can get past the blockage. So that's, 
If you decide on a root canal, that's not, most of those can be cleaned out and can be uh, done correctly. But general dentists should not be doing root canals. Uh, one dentist maybe shouldn't be doing it. That's a bigger question. But general dentists don't, I think, have the training, the expertise, and they just don't do them enough. You know, and it's very fine. Most the the endodontist I refer to, he uses a microscope. Um, <clears throat> he peers down into the tooth. Got this huge contraption that comes over you, puts on a screen. He's actually working, looking over here at the screen and doing it that way. That way, he can see the fine lines in the ca and canals. Most general dentists, I'd say very few, if any, have that kind of technology. And so, uh, like I said, I'm not jury's still out a little bit on it. But you know, used in properly with the right people doing it. For now, I'm okay. Yes, ma'am. What, what would you recommend for someone who has uh, dental implants that they don't want to have to have problem teeth removed and and um, after the fillings out, uh -huh. but still has a lot of <clears throat> infection in the gums? Uh, in the gums or down in the bone? Okay. Yeah, um, I think she, what she's talking about more, um, you have to be careful when you do get infected teeth. Um, if you just have them pulled out, sometimes there's an infection in there. Not all that infection gets out. Some people, just the bleeding and everything will expel it out. But enough has <clears throat> done dentistry long enough where we take x-rays of people's jaw, you know, a year or two years later after they have a tooth pulled, and we'll see a dark circle there. I go, hmm particularly when I was first doing dentistry. And they come by uh, different names in, in dentistry, depends on who you're talking to, but uh, Nico lesions, uh, necrosis, osteonecrosis. But it's where the bone, good bone doesn't fill in. And I'm not an expert in these, I'm not an oral surgeon. But my own curiosity, I've had enough of them over the years, and I've actually numbed patients up, gone in, and you open up the gum, you drill through what's called a cortical plate, and my drill, hit this like a sinkhole and it was like mush and it was just black gunk comes out it smelled it it was and the patient's body had walled that off but it was still it's what by law said we call cavitations so some people even though you have the tooth pulled you don't have the problem go away so one of the things we look for we do a panoramic x-ray we look for these holes in the bone particularly after uh, old root canals sometimes we'll see it even uh, wisdom teeth uh, that wasn't removed properly. We have an oral surgeon in town we work with. He removes the periodontal ligament and infected teeth. He'll actually go down with a, what we call a round burr and cleans off um, the bone. It gets that half millimeter of a bone that he removes, <clears throat> get down to solid bone. And that way you have better chance of new fresh bone growing in there. But if you've had an infected tooth for two years, that layer of the bone is just loaded with toxins and junk. And so that affects the body's ability to make new bones. But you're right. You know, if it's not taken out properly and debrided, it can be a continuing problem. You have to get rid of the tooth, but you still have that hole down the jaw. Will but that affect other teeth? Well, you know, normally I don't see it affect other teeth, but normally I see people with swollen lymph nodes. They have a bad tooth pull and the lymph node doesn't go down. So that's a warning sign to me. Something's still going on. <clears throat> I always start here with my exams, looking down here. You know, how many people have had a root canal? Does it feel fine? Yeah, it feels fine. You know, your lymph nodes, how long has that been there? I don't know. We'll check them six weeks later, still there. Get rid of a bad root canal, six months that lymph node goes down. So, yeah, that gets into the bone too. Any, yes ma'am? Um, so the xylitol, I mean, could you make your toothpaste and put some xylitol in the toothpaste? You can. You want to gargle? <clears throat> what? No, you can. I, it, there's a certain point between convenience and cost when you start doing those things incrementally. So there's a lot of good ones that are pretty economical, particularly if you get online. Um, I'm not that industrious, so I want to make up my own. I've had places, times where I've done with baking, so I just, I got my teeth filled out, but I just don't do it commonly. I've found one with a tea tree oil in it that, that I like, but you can, and there's some online recipes what, what for. Brand, what brand do you really like? Um, there's so many uh, design, uh, designs for health. They're a vitamin company. They have a good dentifrice line, Design for Health. You can get Design on for health. Design for Health. They have a mouthwash. Um, uh, some, there's several good ones, really, if you just read label. Design for Health is one of my favorites. Tooth and Gum Tonic is another one. Tooth and Gum Tonic, yeah. 
and they have a mouthwash, a, a toothpaste, they have a spritzer, and there's really good products. Okay. Any others? Yes. Good. Good question. Yep. Good question. Um, for years, we just with normal X-rays. Normal X-rays, you, you only see about 50% of the tooth because X-rays are one-dimensional, where tooth or teeth are three-dimensional. When I, I just had a new patient, he's got all kinds of health problems. He's got a mouthful of root canals, so I sent him over. There's technology called a comb beam. Um, it's kind of like an MRI, yeah, 3D comb beam. And so an oral surgeon I use, and Dr. Randall's, I was just over yesterday, the end of us is getting one. We, and I had one on a patient that's, and I sent it over a comb, but he has all these health issues. And behind a root where the x-ray would put, pick up, there's a hollow spot there, where there's pocket infection or something happened in there. But comb beams, you can see a 3D image. You can go through slice by slice by slice. And actually, he, we went through, he went yesterday to his office, where the root canal, and you go through each section of the tooth and see how the root canal came down and went through the different canals. And to see if the, uh, whoever did the root missed a canal or if there's a hidden infection down at the end of the root. So the technology is getting better. Uh, no, I think I can get you comb beam can't see about 250. So, I mean, not like an MRI that's thousands of dollars. So, yes. Sure. Sure. Um, good question. There's several out there. When I got diagnosed, one that I used was a DMPS challenge, where they actually injected DMPS, which is a chemical, and it causes your body to excrete it, and then you collect your urine for 24 hours, and they give you a heavy metal profile. It worked for me. Some patients, um, when you take a chelator, if you're real sick, it can mobilize mercury, maybe, or heavy metals in the other part, and some people can get sick for that. Um, there's a new uh, Quicksilver Scientific, they have a website, and they have a tri test where it's not giving you a chelator. They look at a sample of hair, blood, and urine. And with the three of those, they're able to correlate your heavy metal profile. So I've been using more of that lately because I, I don't want to make patients sicker. And so and, uh, Quicksilver Scientific is what I've been using. And then he's got a detox protocol too using uh, glutathione vitamin C, uh, liposomal glutathi glutathione and uh, vitamin C to help you excrete it without having to use chelators. So he's got a whole pro protocol on how to get it out once you found out you've got it too. Yep. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Can you use hydrogen peroxide as a mouthwash? Not daily, you shouldn't. Uh, it's almost too strong. It causes, for short term you can or for sores, but it can actually cause blanching of the gums. And it's a, a little bit too strong. You can dilute it down a little bit, or with baking soda, it kind of dilutes it too. But uh, they don't re recommend it. There's some mouthwashes now. I mean, you can go to uh, Walmart, and they have a natural because the people are demanding it. And I read the ingredients, and some of them weren't too bad. But there is a hydrogen peroxide. They break it down where it's buffered. But yeah, straight, you know, pharmaceutical grade. You have to be careful of that. Yes, ma'am. Uh -huh. it, it's a little abrasive for me. Um, you got to worry about, you know, teeth <clears throat> or enamel. And I, I tell patients, if you've ever been out to a river stream and you've seen what, rock, what water going over rock does over right. every time, it, that's enamel. I mean, uh, it's a little abrasive. Short term, I'm okay. Yeah, it, the salt and the combination makes it. Yeah, short term is okay, but not for daily. That's a good recipe online. I think Doctor Axe. Uh huh. Yeah. Good homemade toothpaste recipe. He does. I like his stuff. How would you like the ratios and things? Yeah, he's got a good website. I like his GI products and the bone yeah. collagen I'm on that. Yeah. Uh, in the back. Um, can you talk about oil oil pulling for someone who has? Oh sure. Really potent. <laughs> oh sure. Um, you have to find an oil that you like. One, I love the taste of coconut oil. Some people hate it. Uh, I like it. But there's so many oils, and you just try the different ones. And then just try to keep your head lean forward and just wish up front and not have it get back of your throat. So like and just keep minutes. it in. They say 20 minutes. I can't keep it in 20 minutes. That's a, <laughs> I'm sorry. They say that. 
I'm not doing it for 20 minutes. I don't have the time, and I'm going to sit there and swish. Yeah, no. So what, how long is you can tolerate it? Okay. Uh, how long do I probably five minutes? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm a guy. I got to get somewhere or do something. So, you know, I, I admit taking the time out of my day. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh huh. Okay. I a lot of it depends. On, you have to read the label on the particle size. Everything comes in on particle size, so there's a fine line between what's too abrasive and too not. If, if I can put it on my fingers and it feels gritty to me, it's too, yeah. Yeah, you want to feel more like of a pasty feel. You don't want to feel the grit in it. Yep. Okay. Thank you all. Yep, nice to meet you.